Welcome back to my channel. I am back in my kitchen. I know the last couple of videos I have been in the office talking to you more about strategies and showing you my analytics, but I am happy to tell you that I'm going to be making another recipe today. And this one I have never made before and I'm excited to try it out is actually a request from one of my viewers, my mother. So let's get started here. Today I'm gonna to be making some healthy almond flour cookies. That means no white sugar or no white flour. What we're gonna be using is an almond flour blend, some organic coconut sugar, bittersweet chocolate chunks, four added grams of sugar. I'm gonna be using very little. I don't normally use things with any kind of sugar in it, but hey. You gotta live a little, right? And then I've got some coconut oil and some, ooh, some baking powder, almond extract. And uh, we'll just, you know, we'll just take it as we go. You never know what's gonna happen around here. We could change it up a bit. Just because it's a recipe doesn't mean it's the only way and you have to go by the book. Just like what I'm gonna be talking to you about today, and that is how to make your YouTube niche, your YouTube channel profitable for you in the end, long term down the road, right? We wanna start a YouTube channel, of course, that we enjoy and we have fun doing, but the long term goal is to make a passive income at the end, right? So making money on YouTube actually starts way before you even launch your channel. It comes when you are in the planning process of figuring out what you're going to be making your YouTube channel about and before you making any sort of video or outline or hit list or anything like that. You have to think about it long term. In a year, five years or ten years down the road, how are you going to monetize that channel? If you can't figure out how you're going to monetize your channel at that point, you might want to take a step back and look at it and consider why you're even doing it in the first place. If this is just a hobby for you, that's fine. But what I'm telling you is just acknowledge the fact that maybe this is just a hobby for you or think about it like, well, I do want to make a passive income. I want to make a business out of this. So you have to strategize before you even launch your channel. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is making an info product with your YouTube channel. When considering what to make your YouTube channel about, it's a good idea to think about down the road, what can I make an info product about? Can I make a course? Can I make some sort of ebook? Can I make a PDF? Something that you can sell that will allow you to get some passive income from your YouTube channel. Think of your YouTube channel as a marketing strategy for whatever product you end up coming up with. Now, if you're writing a book or an ebook or you're doing a course, YouTube is a great way to find your tribe, find the people who love you and your content and warm them up to uh, eventually whatever your product is, right? You do want to help people, but that is the end game of selling something and creating that passive income and creating an online business that will sustain or give you that additional income to give you some freedom in your life. When people think about making money on YouTube, a lot of times they think about ads, which is fine. That's what we all know of. But to get any sort of ad revenue or be monetized on YouTube, you have to get at least 4,000 hours of watch time and at least 1,000 subscribers in a year's time before you're even considered to be monetized by YouTube for ads, that's what you have to get. I would recommend diversifying your income streams from your YouTube channel. That's why you wanna have these other avenues to make money from in case something ends up not being quite what you thought it would be. So some other things that you can think about as well as an info product is affiliate marketing. So say that you have an ebook and somebody places your ebook link on their website or their YouTube channel. Somebody clicks on that link and ends up purchasing your product, that person gets a commission from you. But that's kind of a win-win situation because if it weren't for them kind of promoting your product, you probably wouldn't have gotten that purchase. But then they also get a commission from you. So that's something that you do wanna consider, maybe making that product something that somebody else can promote and would pair really well with someone else's platform. 
make it something that can really coincide with another platform, but you also don't want it to be a direct competitor with another platform. So say you are doing a YouTube channel about home renovation. Well, you can place affiliate links on your channel. Say you talk about a different kind of bathtub or a faucet or uh, something for your yard. You talk about this, you review it, you research it, and the product actually really works for you and you use it in the YouTube video. Well, you can place that link there and if people click on that link and purchase that product, then you will receive a commission. So you could see where it really is a win-win for everybody. <sighs> All right, with that said, how you'll need to monetize your channel eventually, now it comes down to what you're passionate about and what you can actually help people with. And yes, there is a lot of competition on YouTube, but you'd be surprised at how many cracks there are still in YouTube. When you Google something, there is way more competition on Google and search engines like that rather than YouTube. There is still a lot of areas and opportunities where you can fill in the gaps and you can answer those questions for people and you can be that reliable source of information, right? So you want to be the solution to people's problems, whatever they're searching for in YouTube, if they're looking for a tutorial or if they're looking for advice or research, then you want to be the answer to that. So find a need and do the research, you know, figure it out for them, do a tutorial, teach them how to do something. That way you are there, you are their answer. And then the last part of all of this is actually making a YouTube channel and creating content around something that you actually care about and you're passionate about and you want to help people. If you pick a topic that you're not passionate about, then you might get burnt out down the road and quit doing your channel, which is gonna be a real bummer and kind of a waste of time for you. So what is a topic or a niche that you know you can monetize, that you know you can do the research or be an expert or just a little bit better than somebody else at, right, in the industry? and that you're gonna be passionate about, that you care about, that you wanna help people out because that is gonna transpire over camera more than anything else. People can tell the difference. Uh, people can tell between someone who's just in it to uh, get you know, the money or someone who is in it to help you, but of course the money helps as well. And what sets you apart is actually you. Your experiences make it unique. No one else can make a YouTube channel like you can with that topic because no one else has your exact experience, right? You have to think of it that way. What unique experiences, what kind of situations have you been through that you can offer to other people? Put yourself in someone else's shoes. They're looking for a solution to their problem. What have you learned in your own experiences? How have you learned the hard way that you can make it a little bit easier on them? And that will be your golden ticket. I promise you to reach your audience because your audience is what's really going to set yourself apart. They are going to be there from the beginning all the way up until the end. You can get a lot of views and a lot of subscribers, maybe from one or two videos and you can go viral, but that's just going to be a short term thing. You want a long term core audience, a tribe, if you will, to be with you because they're the ones who are gonna be sharing your videos, they're gonna be telling their friends about it, they're gonna be giving you likes and commenting, and they're gonna be giving you constructive feedback um, or compliments, and that's just gonna fuel your fire to make more videos. So what is something that people ask you for help for? What is it that they think, oh, I need to ask him, he'll know, or I need to ask her, she knows this, she's done this before. That is what you have to offer, that's your spin. Something that you've learned from your past the hard way, now you can offer someone else and save them a lot of pain and time and effort and money. And that is a unique experience that eventually is something that no one else can offer. So yes, you do need to pick something that is realistic and the algorithm will eventually pick up and promote to people, right? But you also have to pick something that you know you can do really long term 
and you have to pick something that you're passionate about. And last but not least, you have to pick something that is monetizable because that is gonna keep you going through this YouTube channel. So I promise you, if you do sit down and write all your thoughts out, write all those things down, you will figure it out. So um, I am not gonna be following any sort of special recipe. I'm gonna be kind of looking at a couple different recipes and kind of substituting things because who wants to do things the traditional way, right? And instead of any sort of butter, I'm gonna be using Greek yogurt. So I really hope this works. I'm gonna be using half a cup of Greek yogurt. I don't know if you guys know what Albertsons is. I know some places in the country don't have it, but I went in to get like three of these ingredients and I came out spending $50. Yeah, I cannot go to Albertsons without spending a minimum of a $50. So I just can't, there's no way I can't be like, oh, I'm just gonna run into Albertsons and buy this one thing. No, nope, they get you. That nice hometown Albertsons atmosphere, but gee, it costs ya. We're gonna do one fourth cup of coconut oil, three fourths cup of coconut sugar, two teaspoons vanilla extract, two eggs, two just whole eggs, the whole kitten caboodle in there, baking soda. This is baking powder. Good thing I just noticed that. We gotta get the baking soda. Sorry guys, I'm back. Baking soda, don't ever make that mistake. Rookie mistake. And a half a teaspoon of salt, three cups of almond flour, one and one fourth cups chocolate chips. The cookies are out of the oven and uh, they resemble a pumpkin cookie that you buy at the grocery store in the fall. They're pretty doughy and chocolatey, so we'll see. Hmm, not bad for no sugar, butter, or flour chocolate chip cookies. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out with the algorithm so I can keep making more videos for you. And also turn on that bell notification so you can get notified whenever I do make new videos. And until then, I'll see you next time.